This is the best strength movement to improve your speed, in my opinion. In this video, I'm gonna break down some regressions and progressions so you can start doing this exercise to improve your speed and the reps and sets that you need to make sure you get maximum speed gains. First things first is called a rear foot elevated split squat. The reason why this is so important is because single leg lifts are some of the best transfer to your sprint speed possible. I'm gonna show you a few reasons why. So when you're doing a regular barbell squat, the first thing you're gonna notice is that a lot of people have ankle restrictions in terms of mobility. So once they get to this bottom position, this is probably as far as they can go without getting pinching from the front or tightness from the back. So if they try to go deeper, you're usually gonna end up kicking this butt back and make it more of a hinge dominant squat, which is not gonna be very transferable to your sprinting. What's cool about this is, since in the squat you're using your back a lot, I'm using literally no weight just to demonstrate this, when you're on one foot, you can overload a max strength stimulus, you get max strength gains from this type of lift, but you're not using any back. And then if you do have ankle mobility restrictions, what we can do here, I'm gonna show you on the side to side view, is we can get down here and change the benefits we want from this exercise. If you want more acceleration, you could push knee over toe. It's gonna to be probably the most maximum stimulus you can give for your sprint speed, right? It's gonna be a little really tense on the patella tendon, a little bit less glue, a little bit more quad. If you want more of a stimulus for your acceleration, you get a chair here and you can focus on pushing knee over toe. Now, if you want more vertical shin, this would be from max velocity, think of top end speed, Noah Lyles type of thing. Your shin will be vertical to the ground to your heel. This will work more glute, more hamstring, and do max, more max velocity. But like I said before, if you want acceleration, you can push knee over toe. And even if you have an ankle mobility restriction, you can still get in a pretty good deep position without using your back to actually lift the weight. And due to the lack of compensations, you're truly overloading the lower leg and the lower limb complex to actually improve strength that is transferable to your speed. When you're using a back squat and you can't truly get that range of motion you need, you start using your back. You don't sprint with your back, you sprint with your glutes, your hamstring, your quads, and your stretch storing cycle. So single leg lifts will reduce compensations and give you the joint angles you need to help improve your speed. Another thing about a back squat is when you're in this position right here, you're usually loading up to 300 to 400 pounds, which is a lot on the central nervous system and a lot on your spine. So imagine getting down into this deep squat position. I'm literally just gonna do 135 just as an example. And you're extremely weak in this position. I have to go on my toes because I don't have the angle range of motion. And this isn't transferable. These aren't the joint angles you sprint from, jump from, or even do max velocity sprinting from, right? And then all the load on the spine you're putting, all the load on the central nervous system, because someone like me who's a little bit stronger can go all the way up to 300, 400 pounds. Now you can still get that same overload. And what we're gonna talk about is peak forces. You can still get the same amount of peak forces, which is the highest amount of force you can produce at a peak point with a single leg lift. In the research it shows it as well with single leg quarters, but I'm gonna explain that all over to you in this video. I just wanna give you a reason why this is really important. The first progression is gonna be simply chairs. You can grab chairs, you grab two sticks, and all you're gonna do is go into a split stance position. You can do right here, you can do heel, turn out, just like this, and you can get into a deep position. Overall, it'll be pretty decent. If you need to adjust, you can adjust, right? And we're gonna do deload our body weight with these chairs by putting a lot of our weight onto it, and then we're gonna get into a full range of motion. All right, if you have that back foot too far back, the hip flexor is gonna have a really hard stretch and that might be something that resists your range of motion. And then if you have it too close, it's gonna be very awkward and not really recruit the right type of muscles you're trying to go for, right? So you want that good middle spot. We have a good, nice posture, full range of motion, deloading your body weight and going through this motion, really feeling the glute and the hamstring, making sure you're putting all the pressure on that one leg and not recruiting anything from your back. We don't want to feel our lower back during this exercise like you would in a full range of motion deep squat. Now, the next one's gonna be deloaded body weight, but we're putting our back foot onto a chair or onto some type of bench, right? So still deloading our body weight with these chairs, putting that back foot up, finding a good point, and we're gonna start with this progression. It'll be vertical shin, which is gonna be the first level. Then second level is gonna be knee over toe, so directly above the toe. And then level three will be knee extremely beyond the toe. So level one is vertical shin, then level two is over toe, and then level three, I have very tight pants on, my bad. Level three is extremely beyond the toe. I don't even have that range of motion. Like we said before, vertical shin is gonna be more max velocity. Knee above toe is gonna be very balanced, gonna work max velocity and acceleration. And then extremely beyond the toe is gonna be very hardcore acceleration. 
Still gonna get overall strength benefits, which will transfer over to all athleticism, but just like a little, you know, tidbit. So right here, going through a full range of motion, this one's gonna be hard because you're gonna have to go through a big hip flexor range of motion. So you're gonna feel a big stretch through the hip flexor, and that might be your, your limiting factor. So do not progress into loaded or body weight until you can do this and you get enough range of motion in the hip flexor to go through this full range of motion. Next level, we're still doing the rear foot elevated. So we're gonna have one foot on top. You can do toes uncurled. Some people do toes curled. It's a bunch of debate, whatever feels best to you. I usually do my toes flat, not actually curled onto the ground. You want all the pressure on that front foot. So you don't wanna be pushing off this back foot, which a lot of people do. Once again, tall posture. We're gonna get a vertical shin for this one, and then we're gonna go through a full range of motion. This is completely body weight, okay? Once you can control this, uh, let's say three sets of eight on this body weight version, and slow eccentric, so one, two, three, four, this is the eccentric, and then isometric hold, and then concentric, right? So eccentric, real slow, four to five seconds. You're gonna hold at the bottom for four to five seconds, one, two, three, and explode up for the concentric. Once you can do three sets of eight with the isometric pause at the bottom, then you can progress to loaded rear foot elevated. For the loaded rear foot elevates, I literally just have like 20 pounds here. I'm just gonna show you how to do a basic version of it. Once again, it's the same principles as before. We're gonna go vertical shin and eventually move over to knee over toe and the knee beyond the toe. But we're just gonna go through a full range of motion and we're right here. Your knee doesn't have to touch the ground. It can if you want it. But the main thing we're focusing on is having a full tripod foot. So if the toe comes off the ground, you're not gonna have a tripod and the pinky toe that comes off the ground, you won't have a tripod. So you want the full tripod on the ground and you're just going through a full range of motion. Once again, three sets of eight, slow eccentrics, isometric pause at the bottom, and then we'll get into the real strength one and the best stuff at the end. So once you pass the dumbbell phase, we're usually gonna build all the way up to around 70 to 80 pounds. And it's gonna be a point where you can't even hold the dumbbells anymore. And that's where you're gonna wanna stop and start adding weighted vests. I don't want you going to a barbell split squat position yet, or rear foot elevated barbell squat until you can get to around 70 to 80 pounds with the dumbbells for three sets of six, three sets of five, somewhere around that range, three sets of five to eight. Once you can get that with good eccentric, you don't have to pause on every single one. That's just a beginner variation. But once you start pushing heavier weight, all you wanna do is just tap that knee at the bottom and then explode up with a high concentric. Once you get there around 80, 70 pounds, you progress to barbell, I suggest Smith machine. Uh, for the barbell variation, I wouldn't do barbell on a rear foot elevated. It's a little bit dangerous. I've tried it and I kind of didn't listen to other people and then I fell and almost broke my back doing it. So I'm gonna show you a different variation. All you will do is get to a split stance. Once again, remember what we talked about earlier, it's gonna be toe to heel, twist out, twist out again. And this is overall a pretty good position for most people. You're just getting into a basic split stance variation, and this is just a regular barbell split squat. It's one of the best exercises for acceleration and developing overall overload on the single leg, which is one of the most important things is single leg strength for your sprinting. You're not gonna be using a lot of back, not gonna be using a lot of adductors. It's just gonna be pure glute, pure quads, and pure hamstring, which is very important for your sprinting. And now that we're going extremely heavy, we wanna start building a little more strength. A rep scheme I like to call four by four or five by five where we can either do three sets of five, four sets of four, or five sets of five. In the Speed Academy, we start off with dumbbells. We'll usually do about three to four sets of six to eight. And then we'll eventually, once we get to the barbell split squat variations or the quarter squat variations, we usually are gonna stick at four sets of four and then just add five to 10 pounds every single week to progressive overload. Remember that we're always progressive overloading. We're always adding more weight and we're always trying to improve for the next workout. We're not trying to stay at the same weight. We're trying to increase intensity and load on the body. I'm probably gonna show an overall video on how to do the rear foot elevated with a Smith machine. I'll show some type of work while I'm talking about it. But all you're doing is you're getting a vertical torso. You're gonna get on a Smith machine. You can load a full motion with rear foot elevated. Same thing, a bench or a chair behind you. And you want vertical shin. And then level two would be shin or knee over toe. And then level three would be knee beyond the toe. And that's gonna be the three levels for a Smith machine. You can overload it there and just stay right there and get as strong as possible, especially on the Speed Academy. We do it for three to four months and get as strong as possible and then move on to the next exercises. Now, what you can do with the barbell, and I'm going to show you something, this is my little secret for today, is a lot of people talk about barbell quarter squats. And I used to be a huge fan of barbell quarter squats. You probably see me do a couple videos. I mean, probably doing 400 plus plates of a quarter squat. Small range of motion, joint angle specific to sprinting and jumping and you're just getting through here, exploding out. I used to like it a lot, and I've changed my viewpoints on it, and this is the main reason why, is because once you start getting 400 plates on here, I mean 400 pounds on here, you start to get a lot of back. 
Look how this lower back is starting to kick out a little bit because you have really no choice. It's a big lower back exercise and that's not how you jump. You don't jump with your back, you jump with your glutes, your quads and the overall stretch running complex and your lower limb complex. So we don't wanna use as much lower back. We want to overload the joint angles, the pure leg muscle and concentric force, right? So the way to do this is we'll go on a single leg and instead of doing two foot quarters, we're gonna do single leg quarters. And we can do this a couple ways, like I said, if we're gonna do split stance or single leg quarters, we're gonna get here and either do vertical shin, right? We're dropping, exploding out the top, or my favorite one's the most balanced version is knee over toe, knee above toe, I'm sorry. Knee above toe is just a quarter squat and exploding off as fast as possible. And then the final variation, the final variation would be this, we're on a single foot, knee above toe, and exploding out these quarters you want to make it even harder, you drop to the bottom fast, explode at the top fast. Drop to the bottom fast, just like that. And you're catching yourself and getting a little bit eccentric rear force development at that bottom por uh, portion. And even train stuff like the amortization phase, which is really important for uh, sprinting and jumping. So you can overload the quarter squat positions on one foot and you can get really high lows. So you can go all the way up to 185 pounds, 200 pounds, 225 pounds, and that's higher peak forces than you would probably get in a quarter squat position. And what we said earlier, no lower back. It's completely all load going to your legs, pure concentric force on the legs, no lower back. And there's less of a load to the central nervous system. You gotta remember when you're doing 400 pounds right here, even if it's partial range of motion, huge central nervous system fatigue, that could take you out for the rest of the week. So we're doing single leg, you're only going up to you know, two plates or 185 pounds, you're still getting that same load, the same eccentric rate of force development, pure concentric force development, and then also peak forces onto that single leg, no lower back, but now you're not burning your central nervous system out by going so heavy in load, you know, 400 plus pounds, 300 plus pounds, which will probably take you out for a whole week. And even then, there's also just a crazy risk for injury when you go that heavy, so we can go a lot lighter and be a lot safer. If you don't wanna do the barbell quarter squat, once again, I don't have a Smith machine here, but you can go into a Smith machine or you can even do it with dumbbells. You do 60 to 70 pounds, single leg, and you're just bouncing out the top, exploding to the top. Once again, in the Speed, uh, Speed Academy, we'll do four sets of four, you know, four sets of three, four sets of two, but as fast as possible, usually about 10 to 20% above your one rep, uh, your three rep max at a full range of motion. So whatever your three rep max is, let's say you could do 225 through this full range of motion, then your quarters are gonna be 20% this above. So whatever, 250, whatever it is above, and then you're doing quarters at 250. You're not going all the way up to 400 pounds. You don't need to go that heavy. But in my opinion, that is the best strength movement for overall speed, but that's not the only thing you need. You also need to know how to warm up with the type of exercises in the plyometric field to improve your explosive speed. So go check out this video right here, or somewhere right here, and also go check out the Speed Academy if you enjoyed this video. Hope you guys enjoy, have a good one.